Warrington, an industrial-born town in the northwest of England, nicknamed the most contaminated town in the UK. But why is this? A recent study by local authorities estimated that approximately 23% of land in the town is contaminated, largely due to its historic involvement in the chemical industry. This leads to many brownfield sites needing remediation, sitting unused in prime locations for development. The increasing population in the area has led to a complete lack of affordable new housing, so there arises a need to relieve this pressure, alongside providing sustainability in line with the UK's target of zero carbon dioxide emissions by 2050. This is where my proposal comes in. The site I have chosen is situated in a geographically mobile location in the centre of Warrington, on the site of a previous cleaning chemical factory registered on Warrington's list of potentially contaminated land. The site's location is also advantageous in reducing congestion, reflecting the priorities of the cities and game that are considered when planning. For over 200 years, this site housed a chemical plant, making washing powders and detergents long before the introduction of pollution control to this industry in 1974. More recently, reports have surfaced of chemical leaks, and the proximity of the plant to the Mersey suggests that potential polluted groundwater from these leaks is able to quickly make its way into the water system, which I learnt the importance of monitoring in the second week of For the game. For this reason, it is imperative that this brownfield site is remediated before development, in the interest of both environmental and social reasons. Bioremediation is a wide and rapidly developing field, so the specific type used here matters in order to correctly and successfully treat the present contaminant. The contamination here stems from inorganic sodium-based compounds. Unfortunately, this level of salt is toxic to native plants, so the hydrolysis of these compounds into treatable ions requires the process of phytodesalination. Phytodesalination sounds complicated, but is actually just the use of halophytes to extract salt from the soil. Na plus ions are absorbed into the roots and ions accumulate in the leaves. The leaves of these plants can then be harvested and composted safely after a remediation period of approximately 4 months. In this case, I would use the halophyte honeysuckle because it is fast growing, will spread over the entire site and is cheap to buy and install. Its sweet floral scent will also reduce olfactory pollution. The benefits of this process over others are numerous and include lower carbon dioxide concentrations in the air, quicker and cheaper instalment and higher local satisfaction as less pollutants mean a lower risk to human and respiratory health. I propose a new housing development of four bed family homes on this remediated land involving extra sustainability measures such as electric carports and solar panels to reach the 2050 carbon dioxide net zero target. In recent legislation, no more diesel cars will be built after 2035. This means that the addition of electric carports on the houses will be good for the future. Moreover, budget was a huge part of the city's end game and led me to consider this carefully in my proposal. I also considered the teachings of week 4 in disaster and risk preparation, shown here. To conclude, I believe that the bioremediation and development of this brownfield site, which would previously have been derelict, will positively impact the community in a number of ways, in line with the lessons I learned in the Citizen game. As the most contaminated town in the UK, Warrington still has a long way to go before it reaches 100% remediation, but for the future of this urban environment, I hope that the introduction of more regenerative schemes like this one will help to alleviate some of that burden. Thank you for listening.